Hello to all my friends out there. Dinner time. We've got to eat dinner. So, okay, you guys, I have to admit, I have come up with a good one. I had this recipe, and it's, um, you'd lightly dust chicken with, um, flour, and you add one can of, uh, cream of mushroom soup, and I noticed on here, notice, I got this 50% off, yes, uh, green bean casserole, which is basically green beans with chicken, and I thought, why can't I make a green bean casserole with chicken? It smells so good, you guys. So, I didn't have any, um, I didn't have any of those onion ring things, and I don't really like them that much in my, um, green bean casserole, you know, they get soggy, so I thought, well, um, uh, maybe I can alter the recipe, like, you know, when you need, you want to make something and you don't have all the ingredients, so let's see, I had... Um, cream of mushroom soup. I had milk. I used one half cup, half cup milk, one half cup, uh, one half cup evaporated milk, one half cup water. I had uh, soy sauce, two tablespoons. I ha I didn't put any black pepper. It says eight cups of green beans, but I just had one can of of Walmart green beans. And uh, then you're supposed to have the um, uh, the French's fried onions. But what I had was, I had some uh, minced onions, so I just put that in. Okay, so since I didn't have the onion, I thought, well, um, I do have some of these. Um, I saved my um, fritter mix. And it's oniony fritter fritter mix. This stuff is good and it makes a lot. So I thought I'm just gonna make some. It is have now I was looking for cheap alternatives to bread. It's hush puppy mixed with onion flavor. So I thought, yeah, that will do. And of course my little pan is getting way too hot. Okay, so you can add either water or milk. I just want a few. I don't want to go crazy on this issue of uh, of the onion ring. So I have a little powdered milk and water, you know, evaporated milk. So I'll just add little by little. So uh, one way to save money is just go without stuff. Don't go running to the store every time you need something. Nothing's going to happen if I don't have the onion rings. I have a little dry onion in there. That's good enough. So, okay, so I just mixed it up kind of like, you know, a thick pancake dough. Uh, I do this with my uh, biscuit mix and my pizza mix, too. So, let's see. I hope it's not too hot. Well, I'll put a little piece in and see what happens. Oh, it's okay. All right. I'll just make some little, um, some of these little fritters to go with my chicken. Uh, they're they're uh, frying nicely. Uh oh, they're frying nice and fast. They smell good. Uh oh, my little one's gonna burn. Oh well. That's the way the fritter crumbles. So I ended up with about two small and two large fritters. I mean four, four regular size for yummy. Well, if you get your uh, heat too high, they uh, fry fast, you guys. Uh, having made these a couple times, you don't want your heat to um, high because then your fritters are uh, your fritters are raw in the middle. That's undesirable. 
These are good if you've never, I had never tried them. The only reason I got them is because I was looking for cheap uh, bread alternatives. So now let's see what happened here. Ooh, yummy, yummy, yummy. Look at this, you guys. It's very, very hot. So I'll have some nice gravy. Is it showing? And some chicken. That's my Walmart chicken. I bought a 15. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do the Walmart chicken again because uh, I discovered that um, I can buy extreme markdown uh, shopping cheap. And I want to pursue that, and I tried to pursue that today, and I couldn't, couldn't. And so what I bought was I bought these nice rolls that were like $4, and I got them for $1. So that will be good with my gravy. Did I show you the recipe in case you don't have it? And so all I did is I dusted my chicken with a little flour. If you don't want green beans in your, um, in, it looks good, in your, um, you can just add the, the everything except the green beans, but I think the green beans look good. So I thought these would be good with the, um, because they have the onion, you know. Uh, the last time I made them more like little pancakes. I don't know if that was better or not. Okay, so now. So, let's see if I have a spoon down here. seen some disturbing things on the uh, YouTube channels and what it is is um, professional people ending up homeless and I'm thinking wow that's not good so in a second here I have a little more brainstorming um not at I, I was trying to think of how I got started on this brainstorming and just to let you know I've never met anybody who really wanted to do it but um, it works and so what you do is you just think of anything and everything you possibly can so I'll put a little of this gravy on my delicious bread that I got cheap um, today I tried to do the extreme markdown shopping, you know, when I was out working a little bit. Um, my potatoes are in the ice box. I don't know if that's why they went rotten, you know. And then, you know, I have a little bit. Um, what I can do is just eat this, uh, these green beans down, uh, these green beans and gravy in a little bowl tomorrow. Uh, one thing to do is never waste. There's a good chance that you're not going to run out of food if you're not wasteful. Um, I've noticed a lot of wasteful behavior uh, recently. Okay, to All right, take a look at this. So here's the green beans. It was really too hot to be uh, baking, but I couldn't let that stop me. Okay, so I'm getting good at the tea making. The tea making, the trick is, is watch it until you get it the um, concentration you like, and then take the, um, the um, tea bags out and refrigerate it and get it nice and cold. Once you get used to this, 
uh, what I start doing too is freezing my water. It's much more pleasant to break drink when it's partially frozen. So, yummy. Let me taste this. I will tell you. First of all, I know I'm going to love the gravy because, you know, I have that gravy, love of gravies. I'm trying to cut back on uh, salt. That is really good. If I had some cranberry sauce, that would be super duper. Those are good. Um, it's funny, you know, all these uh, poor people, you know, that have never ha suffered any hardship. I see the pastors in the little churches coming out with videos. And they're good, too. One of them today, he had such a good suggestion. Every time you go to the store buy one or two cans of food for your stockpile or your food storage and I thought you know like this is how you know it's of God because it's not impossible it's not gonna make you buy a bunch of junk you don't need you know it could be anything it could be a can of green beans it could be a dented can or package it could be an extreme markdown Okay, every time you go to the store, buy one or two cans of food for your stockpile. Number two, find easy meals you make out of your stockpile. Voila! Um, I stockpile chicken, hamburger, and bacon ends. And then I buy cheap meat. Um, so that's a stockpile meal. That's good. And, and it was using my cans. Um, you know, I noticed something... Uh, I start shopping in a little bit better stores uh, because I was getting really exasperated at the store I was going to. And I noticed they have a lot of fresh food and not as much canned food. So, um, and the canned food is not cheap. So I'm going to be pursuing the canned food, you know, the markdown food, um, vegetables, uh, fruit, and bread are the things you're likely to run out of. Okay, substitute or leave items out of your recipe. Like I didn't have the french fried onions, so I just added some dry onions and it is fine. I don't miss the, the french fried onions. Okay, buy big bags of potatoes. If you have big bags of potatoes, it's gonna help you so much. You can make scrambles, you can make um, soup, you can make baked potatoes, you can make french fries, you can make twice baked potatoes, you can uh, stuff your potatoes with bacon and cheese. There's, uh, there's all kinds of things. Uh, another thing in the freezer section and in the can section, good luck finding uh, potatoes. There's a few french fries, but not that many, you guys. I did get tater tots in my freezer and those help a lot too. Okay, number five, make big batches of ice cubes, you know, the big ones. Freeze water and refill your water at the kiosk. You know, the gallons, I refill them for 20 cents. That saves money. Number six, eat may egg meals. I think it was yesterday I did 20 egg meals. Eggs are a complete protein and they're cheap. Make stews or casseroles. I think you could kind of like count this as a casserole. Uh, you can also uh, freeze half of it. I'll be making some soup. I was going to make uh, chicken soup, uh, some chicken curry soup, but then I got this brilliant idea, so hey. Make hot dog meals. There's lots of hot dog meals you can make. Um, I usually like, um, I roll hot dogs in those, um, what are these things? These hush puppy things. I, I put hot dogs in them and cook them. Or I uh, cook the hot dogs and I roll them in tortillas and fry them. Or biscuits or hot dogs and chili or hot dogs and pork and beans. Number nine, make bean meals or like...
like black bean burgers are good. I'll be making some of those. I, I did those a long time ago. Also, you can buy good ones at um, Dollar Tree. And then, you know, try to find the extreme markdowns, like the $4 bread for a dollar. And over time, once I get good at this, you're going to see that I'm really going to be having a higher quality of food. I can see that already. Okay, now about this issue of these... This is disturbing, these college-educated people ending up homeless. Well... I told you my son's friend ended up murdered. That's what happens when you start running out of money. So that's why we don't want that to happen. And like to see these people crying and stuff, it's very, very disturbing. And it can, if you knew that you didn't prepare now, that maybe you or your family was not going to survive. So I told you the story, and it was a fictional story, and the guy was captured in war, thrown in a dungeon, and when he came out of the dungeon, he was a slave, and it was a, a step up, and he had his own little dwelling, and in time, he started to prosper. And so that is the same situation here. You're homeless. As soon as you can find some dwelling, life is going to be a whole lot better, and so now I'm going to start uh, brainstorming. Uh, and I'm sure that some of the people who have been watching my brainstorms want to lose their minds. I know, like, I'd be working in salons and, like, they have no capacity or willingness to do that. And uh, it hasn't served them well, I'm sure. Okay, so you're homeless somehow and you don't have a job and you don't have a mo money. Well, you can get um, Section 8. Um, I think it's through HUD. You can look it up. So the first thing would be try to get Section 8. Okay, now fat chance finding any Section 8 in uh, San Diego. But you can take your uh, Section 8 anywhere in the country. And there are cheap places you can live. And you can get your Section 8 and survive for a while until you get back up on your feet. So if you're homeless and you can't do the Section 8, the next step up, like the dungeon to the slavery, would be a car, some kind of vehicle, uh, a little, um, any kind of car is better than homeless. I've seen people with, um, I've seen these two people, and between them they had an income of $2,000 a month living homeless, and I thought, why couldn't you get some kind of cheap car? That would be the next logical thing to do because the apartments are expensive. And if you have another thing, you know, if you get evicted and you don't pay your bills, it's going to be harder to get um, another apartment. Although you're going to be able to do it. You've got to do it. So, so you would go from a car to um, like a... Um, um, a cab over on a truck to like a, some kind of little trailer to some fifth wheel and you just spend day and night trying to think how to take that next step out how to get out of the dungeon because that's what it's like it's worse than the dungeon the dungeon's not in the elements so you go from a hall if you're in a home whatever you want to do don't lose your car okay so now the, the criteria for a Section 8 is not too extreme. You cannot, you cannot have been evicted from a federally funded housing in the last five years. So most of these people who are homeless are new to homelessness. It's very disturbing. We have a lot of young men that are homeless here in San Diego. And, and I mean, it's pitiful. It's, it's really, really pitiful. I saw one today in the bushes, and it wasn't good what I saw. Uh, you know, they're prostituting themselves, and all kinds of vile stuff is happening, and they're going to end up dead. That's what's going to happen, a lot of them. And these poor women, and I don't see why the tent thing would be desirable. Why wouldn't you go try to go to some kind of car or vehicle? Well, they don't have ID. Well, that would be your uh, first step out of the dungeon. Okay, now... Don't waste any food. Either eat it the next day or freeze it. That's what I do. 
okay now what now we're just going to start brainstorming how to make all the situations better because we're we're going to be facing inflation a lot of people are in denial of this but the best thing you can do is stockpile buy one or two cans every day or every other day or when you go to the store number one get free food and don't spend any money so you're saying well how would i do that well you'd have to get ebt or you'd have to go to the pantries or you you have to go to the food bank um any out here anyone can go to the food bank and so what you want to do is you want to hang on to your money so that you don't end up homeless so that you don't end up with no gas to get to work stuff like that so you would want one of your expenses is food and if you can cut your expense of food then you know that's going to give you some money to buy gas to pay your utilities turn the utilities off at the breaker except the refrigerator unless you live in one of these uh, areas uh, like the heat has been brutal here um, I told you guys today when I was in Santee I go oh it feels so much better and I looked up and it was 96 and a guy said to me wow it sure is nice and I go yeah it's 96 that's how hot it was so we have to be careful or if it's too cold you could freeze and then you could die and if you get pneumonia then you're gonna have to go to the hospital and then you might get the COVID okay wash your clothes out by hand when I was young and I went to beauty school we had this teacher and she said don't be coming to school with a dirty uh, uniform wash your uniform and hang it out so you know that's what you have to do uh, you don't have to wash everything you can just wash the the hems and the crotch and the armpits or whatever and hang it out but uh, then they should be pretty much ready collect cans try to get 60 per day three dollars a day that's really going to help you and that's going to give you a little income if you don't have any money and you don't have to a job you have to be open-minded uh, the one guy that I met that was very very drunk uh, I had later I thought he was clearly it was clearly not good but he did look maybe he was willing to try to get the cats like these college educated women I'll tell I could get 60 cans you guys but you have to be careful because when there's more people out trying to get these resources you know it could be dangerous they can get territorial over the cans find churches that give free clothes or thrift stores on one dollar day we have the dollar day and i told you guys my son, my friend's uh, husband went to hawaii and lived in his car and he bought seven changes of clothes and he basically lived on the beach and in his car if the car thing has to happen you have to live somewhere like hawaii like he did or uh, san diego but san diego is is really really expensive but it, it's better than trying to be up in northern california also you know i think staying near the cities is better uh some uh, campers got trapped and had to be life flighted out of those fires it's very very dangerous okay now this is something i have done find 50 cent cans of food and you know what it's not easy to do it takes a little practice i found pork and beans vienna sausage you can find top ramen cups chili with no beans uh, the markdown food is 50 cents bread 50 percent off so it's 50 cents potted meat and the walmart pies are um, 30 cents you know the fruit pies uh, 25 cent cans of soda pop and tea is cheap okay and then buy cheap meat and put that in your freezer I usually get hot dogs chorizo bologna and pork sausage or any any kind of meat I can find for about a dollar okay now of all the things I brainstorm that are coming after this, resale is the easiest way to make money. You can go to the swap meet out here and if people leave stuff 
you're free to take take it if you want it. You can just take a few items. You can hand pick it. If you need clothes, I remember one one day I was out there and some guy goes, here, take this, it'll fit you. And it was a jacket. And I thought, you know, if I needed a jacket, I would definitely take it. So go to the swap meet and see if people leave stuff and then you can sell that stuff. Also try to get curbside stuff. I told you there's tons of curbs. I got a rolling pin, uh, two baseball mitts. I, I still have some junk in my truck. Okay, so, and then you have to sell it. Okay, so now I'm coming up, I'm pretending, I'm thinking, oh no, I need a job. I'm not gonna sit on the, in the, out in the elements. I'm gonna be thinking every single minute of the day, what the hell can I do? So here's what I came up with, janitors, security, you know, the people that mill around with no guns. <laughs> oh, they were a big help too when they were tearing La Mesa up. <laughs> those, were some, those were some dangerous looters. That is really bad. Uh, caregiving jobs, that, sometimes you can live in with those. That is good until you get up on your feet. Live in nanny. We have dog walkers here that make good money. Housework, uh, jobs in group homes, so hopefully you can live there. Uh, developmentally uh, disabled people, um, they have live-in helpers, uh, yard work. Um, what I used to do, and I used to prevail too, is I worked lots of part-time jobs. One would be two days, one would be three days, one would be the weekends, and I would work all the time, sometimes two jobs in one day. That wasn't uncommon. Um, one time I didn't have a car and I worked on one side of town until like three o'clock, and then I walked to the other side from three until eight, or two until eight, and I did that. One time I worked during the day as a hairdresser and I worked at a bakery at night I mean, I did whatever I had to do. It was very unpleasant. <laughs> clean windows, uh, clean offices, uh, nursing home jobs, like, you know, in the kitchen, or also they have maintenance, you know, cleaners, um, like CNAs, you know. When my husband was in there, there was a guy who came in to give him a shower, and I'm thinking, oh my, oh my God. Uh, jobs cleaning hospitals everybody i have known who's had one of those jobs has gotten something terrible but if you're careful driving elders i know some woman i know this woman and she does that she has a whole bunch of these elderly women from her church and she drives them around and does stuff and they pay her a little apartment managers you know if you can do that maintenance in apartments Hauling, moving, and cleaning big messes. I was watching these uh, men that go in, like when people trash residences, and I mean, it's, it's pretty horrifying, and they clean it in one day. And then they haul all the stuff off. Uh, uh, cafeterias, like in hospitals or schools, you know, any kind of those kind of jobs. Um, Walmart and McDonald's and those kind of jobs. Um, schools, janitors, guard security. Um, I don't know what would prevent a person from selling food, you know. Um, when I worked in the salons, people came around and sold um, fruit, like dragon fruit, like yogurt and stuff. We used to buy it. You know, you go into the beauty, um, shops and the businesses we had a guy who sold pillows blankets and purses and also at the swap meet they sold socks find jobs that let you park in back of the job my friend's husband did that and sometimes he stayed on people's couches find jobs that let you park like your rv and hook up to their electricity when you're not working Okay, so now, now you're homeless, you're, you don't have any money, you don't have a job, you just gotta get through the day. So here's what I came up with. 
Um, maybe someone you know will give you a key so you can get in the rec room. I mean, it could work for a while. Uh, barbecue areas, uh, doorways that are like small rooms. Um, okay, like parking lots with um, covered uh, parking, you know, where they park their cars. Um, like if somebody's vacant or something, uh, restrooms, you know, uh, one night I got stuck in a, a bus terminal in El Centro. That was a nightmare. So what I did, because the bus wasn't coming until 6 in the morning, I walked over to the coffee shop and sat there and, you know, ate a bunch of snacks and drank coffee and then, you know, went back. It was the worst night of my life. <laughs> it's my life. I don't know why I'm alive. Okay, restrooms. Okay, rest stops. Car ports. If you can find some kind of car ports, it's better. I, I don't like this tent thing. I don't see how like sewers, tents, stuff like that. I'd say it'd be better to go solo. Uh, trolley stops. Uh, bus depots. Casinos. I bet you that's why the COVID was... Patios, like vacant apartments or homes with patios. Uh, laundry rooms, clubhouses, garages, carports. Okay, now you know those little those little square things and the dumpsters are in? Some of them are not that bad. Like, you know, here in town, one is a church and they just throw like cardboard and stuff in there. And then another one is the bank. And, and then there's like the fast food places that have the big ones that are fairly clean. I don't know why the homeless don't go for clean, sheltered areas. So keep that in mind. Uh, senior housing is very uh, cheap. Sometimes you can get into those through social services. Okay, and then find the absolute cheapest, cheapest places to live like uh, TJ or Takati. It's better than the streets. Um, I've known quite a few men who've lived down there. Shelters. Okay, there are shelters. I would reject all these shelters that take every last penny you have, and I would just find the shelters that let you sleep there for free. I mean, some of the shelters out here will take every flipping penny you have and not even leave you and give you bad food, too. Um, also, um, well, this sounds bad, but it's better than the street. Drug rehabs, halfway houses, if you go to AA and NA, sometimes they help you. Uh, most of the people that I've met up with look like they could use it. <laughs> like the guy I met yesterday with the Gatorade, well, it freaked me out. Okay, now, you need some money, right? Sell blood or blood plasma? I know, like, respectable people that do that, you guys. But I was working in fairly good areas. Okay, then, you know, there's places you might get shelter in college campuses, schools, hospital, uh, churches, and office buildings. Also, storage units. There are storage units, and I have seen women. Um, I saw one woman... It was a video and she was convinced she was targeted and she was sleeping in a storage unit. Okay, in salons, they have back rooms with couches and every once in a while the, the girls would sneak their boyfriends in and somehow get caught by a co-worker, but, you know, stuff like that. Office spaces, share rooms. Like if somebody's like renting a room, maybe you can share a room. Patios. Okay, horse tack rooms. <laughs> okay, most people that own horses, those horses are living better than the homeless, right? So how I thought of this was, there was a really bad guy and he was molesting the horses, yes. And, and of course he got caught. But that was a big scandal. But, you know, um, remember the story about my friend had an Arabian horse and I used the neighbor's horse? Well, one of our jobs was cleaning the tack room, and the tack room was a whole lot nicer than probably a homeless shelter. Okay, and then there's this issue of the mini apartments. I heard, um, you know, I was thinking about these mini apartments a lot, 
and someone I know, her daughter became fascinated with the Asian way of life, and it, it turned out to be quite the nightmare, but she was saying over there they have actual, their dwelling is the size of a fairly large, like this kitchen, that's their dwelling, and this is a small kitchen. So many apartments and condos, and then anywhere that has like back rooms that you could get into. So that is the brainstorming. This is my tasty meal, and it really is tasty too. Okay, you guys, please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any good brainstorming ideas, can you leave them under um, comments? I mean, it is horrible seeing those poor women crying, you know, who had been professionals. Uh, it's horrifying. Pregnant women, I was horrified. Okay, you guys, at night I pray for you guys, and God bless you all.